Welcome back to this tutorial. In this video, we'll be learning about proof of work. Now proof of work is the concept which makes things difficult for the fraudulent node to catch up with the honest nodes. So the concept of proof of work is also used beyond the context of blockchain. So ideally, the purpose of proof of work is to produce a challenge to the user or a computer. The user or the computer has to produce the challenge result and that challenge result will be submitted to the proof of work. That result should have shown some efficient proof of work being done against that particular challenge. And once that proof of work is validated, the user or the computer will be accepted further. So this eliminates the entities which are slow and are not capable enough to generate the proof of work. The concept of proof of work is also used in various web based frameworks as well as in various secured mail servers to prevent the fraudulent and spam messages as well. So let's see the proof of work in the concept of blockchain. The idea beyond proof of work in the context of blockchain is to find or generate a value which is number one very difficult to generate in terms of the CPU power and number two, it should be very easily verifiable. So let's see how blockchain solves these two problems. So one of the common example of proof of work in blockchain is the n leading zeros. Let's say for example, you have to generate a hash value such that n is equals to four. So in that case, you will have to generate the value of hash such that there are four leading zeros in the hash value as shown over here. So how we will generate such proof of work in case of blockchain. Now, if you can just recall the block structure, the question which will come to your mind is that we have block number, we have block data and we have rest of the fields which field can be used which will help us to generate such n leading zeros in the block hash. The one field which we had was the nuns field. So here we will be generating or we will be finding a value of nuns maybe by brute force starting from zero to some value such that the combination of nuns and the block data which has been generated including the hash value of the previous block comes out with the required leading zeros. So you can set the value of n as per the difficulty of the proof of work which you want. For example, in case of bitcoins, they change the value of n every now and then as per the criteria of the algorithm. So in your blockchain implementation, you can have your own custom algorithm for the difficulty of n. So more the value of n, more it will be difficult for the computer to find such value with that many leading zeros. So this, let's see this in the context of the block structure as well. We will have to find out this nuns such that each time we produce a hash value over here should be such that it should have four leading zeros. So this is how the arrangement which should be worked in case of proof of work. So what is the significance of proof of work in the context of blockchain? So proof of work in context of blockchain signifies that the computation required is exponential to the number of leading zero required in the proof of work algorithm. As well as once the CPU power has been expended to satisfy the criteria of proof of work the proof of work cannot be changed and hence if the data is changed if the block is changed the proof of work has to be redone again in case of blockchain the blocks are chained with each other and the hash value of the current block is dependent on the hash value of the previous block the proof of work has to be redone again for the all the blocks in the entire blockchain even if the attacker tries to catch up with this and tries to produce the proof of work for the entire blockchain 
and tries to act much more faster, the block will be first assessed and then it will be added. If it is found that block is not valid, then that block will be sent for the consensus. And if the consensus is not agreed upon, that block will be not considered in the main copy. In such cases, the chain with the longest proof of work will be accepted. And hence, those blocks which are not accepted will be considered as the dangling block or if there are chains of blocks, then it will be considered as a dangling branch. Thus, this copy of the block will be rejected. If the majority of the nodes are honest, they are going to grow and they are going to outpace the ones which are not honest and will hence be able to establish a trust framework by using the proof of work concept. Let's say for example, even if somebody tries to modify any block, then the attacker would once again, as we have discussed, would have to redo all the proof of work for the blocks that are there from till until the last block of the blockchain. And hence, to catch up and surpass the honest nodes will be very much difficult. As per the original paper of Satashi Nakamoto, it says that there is a premises in the paper and there is some also mathematical proof shown that as the number of blocks increases, the probability of the slower attacker trying to catch up diminishes. So this is one of the, or one of the premises on which it is said that it is going to manage the trust framework by using the proof of work concept. Let's see how the transactions are stored in the block structure in the coming videos. Thank you.